Hello and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM, live right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, May 3rd, 2020. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. I surrender <laughs> all. I surrender uh, no. all. I'm beginning all to see to a trend. You, my precious <laughs> Savior, I surrender <laughs> all. Very well done. Very I'm, well I'm going to have to hop in two minutes after we start. <laughs> oh, really? And our guests, <laughs> our guests today are Joy Woods, J.W. Kennedy, uh, Chad the Impaler, and Boudreaux. Uh, welcome, uh, Chad. He's not here yet, is and, he? And Dread Pirate Hicks. Yeah, Dread Pirate Hicks is here, but I thought, I thought Scott was too. Anyway, I didn't leave anybody out. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville or East Tennessee, for that matter, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that get together right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist television show broadcasting oh. here from Knoxville? Oh, my god! Did gosh. you know that, Wombat? I love that show. I didn't even know you know about that show. So I that's did. actually oh, kind yeah. of interesting. So, I, so I, the whole reason why I became a scientist was because of like basically the show. Because you would have Bill and I come up and he'd be like, hey, man, science is awesome. And I'd be like, science is awesome. And I'm like, maybe I should be a scientist when I grow up. He's yeah. like, you could totally do it. And I think it's really yeah. good for kids to like watch really educational shows mm -hmm. on growing up on TV. Yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah, sure I'm they you, touch on science, but it's I'm, not. I'm glad you promote it's that. not the Bill Nye show. <laughs> it's an atheist show, and it's a call-in show, and they've been doing it for ten years. But you can find it on YouTube now. Uh, they're streaming live every week, and then they'll talk to you more about that the details after the mid-show break. Right now, we're just about ready to get into our topic. Uh, first, uh, if you have any comments that you'd like to. Uh, throw into the show or bring up questions you can always go to the digital free thought radio our facebook page and post those comments there use the messaging function sure. now post them in the uh, youtube comments as well too Why really uh, yeah and uh jw we're ready for your topic i think you were asked going to ask uh why do we care uh, well um this is a um Usually we'll, we'll cover a topic that we usually get from um, theists or um, or the religious. And um, today I thought it would be interesting if we could answer the question that we get from both sides. Because a lot of atheists ask this question too, atheist agnostics and, and non-religious, is that why do people like us who are atheist agnostics and non-religious have a YouTube channel and have podcasts and vote? and um all those things and, and get get so involved with this and it's um i think it would be an interesting topic to see um why we each individually are here and why we each individually are so passionate about being vocal and politically active about the topic and um yeah very cool i uh wrote an article on this very topic on my blog digital free thought uh, dot com slash blog it's called what's so wrong with religion anyway and it goes on and on it got probably a dozen different items in there that i fleshed out pretty well but <clears throat> way I, the way i hear people ask me is, is why do you have to be out here talking to christians why do you have to have why do you a, have to be annoying a, and ask an atheist table why do you have why do you care what atheist uh, theists believe and um to me it's it's the answer is short and simple. Religion causes great harm in the world, and we have to address that harm and hopefully uh, work to eliminate as much of it as we can. And now we'll go into details in the show, but that's basically where we're, I think we're all coming from when sure, it comes to yeah. that. Boudreaux looks like he's got something on his mind. Mm -hmm. Boudreaux, what do you feel about this? Yeah, what, uh, I guess what strikes me about that immediately is religion wouldn't be nearly as bad if there was just one. 
And <laughs> in some ways, in some ways, it'd be, <laughs> it'd be it'd be unified and depends and on be, the religion. I mean, that's right. what the Pope sure. was thinking the entire time. Like, that's yeah. the whole point of the Crusades. That was the point. Like, when you think <laughs> yeah. about it, it all was and for the greater good. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's a, that's a philosophy with no yeah, problem. But one it. religion does sound kind of uh, totalitarian to me, even though there are three major religions that have uh, very totalitarian tendencies and are have had a, like Christianity has had a history of totalitarianism, but you've kind of seen it kind of relax over the past century, in a, in a sense at least, um, in um, in certain countries. But then we have um, certain people like in America trying to bring bring back certain or because I mean in America originally we were secular but now we have people in America trying to um, bring back or bring in um, certain Christian principles so but anyway uh, to the to the main main topic I just say to, to have one religion that even that that does sound kind of kind of concerning to me but I mean maybe it's just because religion is concerning in general to me <laughs> Interesting topic. I, I always thought that America was never absolutely secular, but that we just didn't want to worship the same way how an already established church worshiped. Yeah. And I feel like whenever you have different people, they're going to have different ways of wanting to worship. Even if it's the same religion, there's just going to be schisms that are natural by virtue of the fact that people are different. And that's well, what's so hard to keep it all in the same umbrella. Yeah, well, I, I use that term loosely in a sense because um, uh, God isn't mentioned in the Constitution and there were a lot of um, deists and agnostics that were involved in the writing of the Constitution and the, um, the Declaration of Independence, uh, Thomas Paine, Thomas Jefferson, those, those kinds of people. But anyway, I was just saying like one religion. I, I, was, I mean, I, I guess it could be a really good religion or a really bad religion. Who knows? Mm. But I'm I'm curious as that um, Boudreau, like why why does why does one religion seem less threatening than multiple religions? Uh, well, I, like I said, I kind of end, ended it with it 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 would unify things and and make it harder to to disband. I think one of the lucky things about being having so many religions is that you can just point to multiple religions as an argument against any religion, right? No. Uh, but, but if there was one single religion, I feel like we wouldn't have wars over believing in different gods. We wouldn't have, you know, I, I guess maybe it would be harder for atheists to argue uh, with theists. But it, I think it would be a lot more peaceful, even if it was. And we may have less world wars, but it doesn't mean that we'd have less atrocities. Um, exactly. I mean, I, true. Go ahead, uh, the Sarah. the idea that uh, that uh, people have a connection uh, to a higher power that creates division just in and itself. Uh, because if you've got priests who are closer to God than the people, then right away you've got conflicting views on who's got the closer connection to God. So even yeah. internally, I think there's a potential for a lot of conflict. Yeah. And back when uh, there was only one religion, like in uh, England, people came to America. You're talking about how America got started was because it, they found it over overburdening and oppressive and, and they, they wanted to worship different ways. So you would have a, a society where people, if it was all one religion all over the world, then you would have those societies that would rebel. They would uh, try to... Uh, at least gather among themselves and, and fight the established rule. Oh, where you know, would they go? And that doesn't even consider. Space. Oh, I am inside. I was thinking atheism. They underground. Would, yeah. If they if they don't like the religion, if there's one religion, only one religion, you can't have any more. Mm -hmm. If they have a problem with that religion, there's only one place to go. Mm -hmm. Underground or. Oh, oh atheism. atheism. Yeah, Man, atheism. I don't want a lot of angry atheists who are literally angry at the one <laughs> true God. <laughs> Everyone else believes it. I'd rather just have outcasts from everybody. But, but that doesn't even talk about science. I mean, if, the, if one religion ruled the entire world, science would have a really hard row to hoe because mm -hmm. every single establishment would be combined to back up any any resistance to a scientific advancement. So Larry mm -hmm. brings up an incredible point because when you have Muslim scientists who, and, and Islam is like, well, we don't hard 
believe evolution like humans come from like evolved you know um previous animals and then you have christian scientists who also discover that evolution has points and muslim scientists discovering that you know evolution has points and maybe you have like hindu scientists discover it it seems like there's an objective truth that's apart from whatever anyone's particular societal upbringing or tradition is that science is very much an independent body that's you know exemplified by the fact that regardless of whatever religious view you have when you do the scientific method properly you come to this one conclusion and I feel like there's value in having different perspectives reach that same conclusion as just a demonstrative. Mm -hmm. I've heard, a, I've seen a meme online that uh, some atheists, uh, agnostics and uh, non-religious believe that if there was one religion and it was unified, that would actually be evidence of a higher power because unity among the religious seems to almost be nearly impossible so yeah it'd be more compelling for me for sure more compelling is a good way to say it i, I don't think it would be evidence it'd be it'd more be evidence would just be bad evidence <laughs> it would yeah. be compelling yeah and, and that's one of the reasons why I, like the whole list of reasons why i decided to leave uh christianity is is that it just acted like any other major religion at least monotheistic with all of its divisions and right. the book itself promised supernatural unity among believers that just yeah. there i mean like technically a jesus on a piece of toast is evidence it's just what's your standard and are you willing yeah, to accept yeah. it here or higher right yeah, yeah. higher the standard the better wheat um, bread or white bread because i think that would change it too. oh it's super important super important because you got i mean what 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 jesus do you think best exemplifies a person born in the middle east in mesopotamian era you got to get that wheat baby right, right. So, i will say this this is to eric's point of view i'm going to play uh some devil's advocate because i think i see i think i understood where eric was coming from it's like if you just had a religion that wasn't as oppressive that was very much just the mundane sort of loosely held spiritual just be connected with yourself like find a congregation the guys to work with improve your society and who knows what might happen in the future but at least we will spend now making heaven here basically like in a sense like that i can get behind just the mindset and you don't necessarily have to have a god belief to have a religion like it's yeah. just more of like a practice of how you you know behave and 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 deal with some some relationships with yourself and other people like you can you can express that religiously without a god belief and maybe if there was one non-theistic god belief maybe that'd be cool what do you think yeah about that? um and uh, if a religion that, that just makes me think like if if a religion has supernatural claims that you don't really that there's a lackadaisical attitude about believing like there's no threat of hell or reward of heaven to believe these supernatural claims. How many generations, if not in the one generation that it was originated, would it last? Hmm. Just like Judaism you know, doesn't really have a we've, strong. We've, yeah. Judaism we've, doesn't have what the afterlife. Uh, at least like, like a moderate Jew doesn't like um, non-Orthodox, I guess. Right. Oh, so yeah. but that's right. that. Yeah. That one's lasting pretty long. Yes. But a lot of them identify culturally as Jewish, but intellectually as atheists. Some yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too. Well, yeah. A lot of the Eastern religions, too, they don't have an afterlife belief other than the reincarnation or something on this world. Um, they may think that their spirits uh, still inhabit the earth or whatever, mm -hmm. but there's there's not a whole heaven hell type good bad place um to go after that but they're more we philosophical religions anyway dread pyre you mind telling me about the possiferian belief of the afterlife and um how how relevant it is to actual possiferians well oh it's it's quite relevant so in possiferian heaven um there's a beer volcano okay and a stripper factory <laughs> and and male and female uh, and it's <laughs> hey, hey you know the gender, gen, gender Whatever's fluid in between. Yeah, gender yeah, yeah, yeah. fluid yeah, yeah, yeah. You absolutely got, you got everything yeah Centaurs. and then in and then in pastafarian <laughs> hell uh the beer volcano spews out stale beer and the strippers all have stds oh no <laughs> good incentive to be good yeah. oh, i didn't even i didn't know there was a hell in the pastafarian worldview I didn't That's, there you go well if you don't follow learn. the eight i'd rather you didn't uh, you know, you're taking chances there. 
And I don't even one, like regular The noodly beer. one may touch oh. you in a bad way. Okay. Someone's going to have to explain to me like how to properly enjoy beer because every single time I try it, I'm like, I would rather drink juice. Don't you know about apple juice in a box? <laughs> it's the best drink ever. Yeah, have you tried a dark beer? Uh, some maybe, of the lager, uh, but, like Guinness. Uh, mm. uh, it's uh, meal in a glass. Like, like, isn't this just wheat fermented? It's just like, this is pretty gross, isn't it? Like hops and stuff Not like that? Not just no, wheat. Like, juice no. tastes better. <laughs> you can make beer Everyone out of honey it. for that matter. Uh, so why so, do yeah. we... Oh, I, go for I, it. I, I was just going to, you know, just to talk, uh, you know, with uh, JW here mm. on his topic. Yeah. Um, you know, this is something I remember from uh, Matt Dillahunty is that, uh, you know, um, beliefs have uh, inform our actions and actions have consequences. And that's why it's important to me uh, as a person to engage people about their beliefs, especially religious ones, because uh, when the world is full of magic and unpredictable, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a world I, I really wouldn't want to live in. Um, and that's why I depend on science as a methodology for investigation. So that it sounds like there's a answer. strong... There's a strong personal benefit for you to care. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's uniform for everybody. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, I have, uh, you know, my kids, uh, you know, my kids, my grandkids, um, my daughter, she's, uh, you know, a born again Christian. And uh, like, I can't even, I can't even engage her on Facebook because it's all about, you know, her beliefs and, and God. And, and that's of course trickled into her, her kids. Uh, uh, the, the, my grandson refuses to work on Sunday cause he says I'm a Christian and you know, that's our holy day. Can we you know? take a quick time out mm -hmm. to just talk about what the Georgian calendar is? Cause God worked for six days in the book. He worked for six days and took a rest off on the last day of the week. Right. Mm. And let's name again to the fact that the, all seven days are named after different gods, but mm -hmm. <laughs> Sunday Indeed. is the first day of the week. Named after the sun, but I'm not even in there. It's well, the first day Hebrew, of the week. In Hebrew, uh, the, uh, I think, from what I remember when I was studying Hebrew roots, it's um, that they just number the days in, in, in the Hebrew language. One, two, three, four, five, six, Sabbath. Works for me. I think. But Sunday is the first day of the week in a, on a Georgian calendar. Yeah. Saturday is the weekend. It's the weekends, the ends of the week. Mm -hmm. Why are people taking Saturday off? Why, why aren't people taking Saturday off? That's my thing. Saturday is the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Like that's the day of rest. Why aren't, why are people taking the first day of the week? I feel like they're trying to get the two, double day. They're trying to get well, the extra week. Um, uh, the lobby going know, on. When here. I was studying Hebrew roots, this was that the, the, the Catholic church or the, the early church before, right, right before it became a Catholic, there's, there was a lot of animosity um, against the Jews because they blamed the Jews for killing Jesus. So, they came up with all these doctrines to make them so distinct from, from Jews. And then they, they tried their best to justify them with scripture. And one of them was Jesus was raised from the dead on Sunday, which he writ really wasn't. You could actually make a good argument that he died on Wednesday and rose on Saturday. Um, but Jesus was raised on Sunday. Jesus did away with the law, at least the laws that we don't want to do. Um, and so that, that was just part of the, part of all that. Like, we don't have to do this anymore. We don't have to do that anymore. And anybody who does that anymore is cursed and blinded by Satan. And so it was just the whole reamp of, oh, this is the new Testament. This is the new covenant. This is what we do. So basically in, in, in short, in simple terms, they just made stuff up so they would look different. I feel like talking about Jesus is sort of like talking to a Batman fan about where Superman died. And it's just like, no, no, no. He died in chapter 40, episode 46. Of, it's like, no, wait, wait. Deathstroke came by from the yeah, planet like Jeebus. That, it's, it's like, it's like everyone, it's, it's like, Jeebus. it's very contentious, but there's a lot of different narratives competing with each other. If only yeah. there was like some sort of council that can like choose which chapters go in the Bible or not. Gary, I'm so sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> well, that's all right. But I, I did, you know, because I was talking about my grandson who, mm -hmm. like I said, just, you know, he, he cherry picked something that was convenient for him to use as an excuse to not work on Sundays. Right. And, uh, you know, yeah. uh, oh, that makes like I, you know, I, I, I've had a chat over coffee with, with my grandson. It's posted on my YouTube channel. Um, and we talked about Santa Claus and I was trying to see if there was a way to bridge um, his, because he used to believe in Santa Claus. Um, I used to be the 
community Santa Claus every year for a number of years. You have been and I, Santa. I remember him looking at me with complete awe and astonishment as I was on the sleigh, on the parade through town. Um, and he'd come up and he, he wouldn't recognize me. Um, mm. But, you know, there was a, and then he did. Then he realized that there is no Santa Claus. And so I was trying to bridge that sort of uh, realization with his current uh, belief in in the deity um, mm. but it, it didn't seem to happen or if it did he's still using it as a means to excuse himself from work on Sunday so like I say you know about the connection of you know our, our beliefs inform our actions and actions have consequences so mm -hmm. yeah plus yeah. it's easy to take a day off isn't it like isn't it just like oh, well i mean I and you could just say day. that without having to use a higher <laughs> power as an excuse it's true yeah. it's like you can be lazy without being lazy and you know intellectually lazy yeah, you don't yeah. have to yeah. go yeah. there yeah but i think also if um our beliefs inform our actions but it it informs our actions even more depending on how seriously we take that belief because um, in my 27, 26 years of being part of Christian church, there were a whole level, a whole spectrum of people, of how, how serious they were about their faith and Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, Good. Thanks. Keep going, Joey. And how serious they were about their faith. So it, 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 it's there's just a wide range of people and so I think if uh, with me you know uh, how serious I was about, about my faith and how serious I was about the you know if the Bible is true then I need to obey it that in in time led me out but what the puzzle is what what do you guys think uh, when you're talking to someone or you know somebody that just has a lackadaisical attitude about it all, what, what would you say to them or how would you get them to uh, take, you know, supernatural beliefs seriously or take, take the fact that believing in things that don't have good evidence, how, how would you get them to, to see that it's a, it's a very important thing to not believe something without I, good evidence? If they just had this lackadaisical, meh, kind of pothead mm -hmm. attitude. Probably. I will, you I will I'll right? summarize. Hey, you, you asked the question, Joey. We're going <laughs> to yeah. taper it here. <laughs> but I'm saying like, I'm, I'm going to take a line from what I heard uh, Nathaniel say yesterday. It's like, when is it a good time to be an advocate for the truth? And it turns out there's not really a bad time to not, or there's not a bad time to yeah. not be an advocate for the truth. You should always try to be an advocate for the truth. That's what compels me and I imagine all of you guys as well, to present what is what we believe to be a more objective reality than what's being perpetrated behind a church pew. And, mm -hmm. we, and there's, of course, nice means of doing it. And there's you know, really mean ways of doing it. When we've chosen like, the more cordial way of engaging people who are willing to have conversations with us and, and hopefully through you know, a brief conversation, give them the opportunity to change their own mind. It's not something that we're going to do for them. It's something they can do only on their own. They and have like, to. That's the yeah. way it works. And it doesn't work in, it, I mean, even with a five-minute conversation, it's not going to change at the end of that conversation, but it'll be a pebble in their shoe. And I bet you your grandson is going to remember, I had a very pleasant conversation with my grandfather. Mm -hmm. My mom says he's an atheist or like as a apostate or something like that. But when my pastor says atheists are bad people, I'm going to think of that good conversation I had with my grandpa. I'm going to imagine that he came out and cared about me to the point where we just had a conversation, didn't push me anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's going to stick with me a lot more. And I'm going to wonder how hard it's going to be for me to get out of this religion <laughs> compared to what it would be like if I said, hey, uh, like what kind of like, you know, hurdles would I come by? And are these hurdles representative of the fact that I believe this is true or that I'm just here because it's more convenient? Like yeah. I have to do that weighing myself. Mm -hmm. Pirate, and, and this is one question I've sort of tossed around in my mind because of course he's, he's 17 now and he's, he's getting close to the point where um, mom's going to be asking him to, you know, uh, forge his own destiny and climb on I, out of the nest. I thought you were going to say checks. Checks? Forge his own checks. I didn't know. Oh. That kind of <laughs> <in Canada. laughs> 
And well, like, you know, you do that on your 18th I, he, birthday he in may Canada. Be, he That's may weird. be so inclined. I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, like um, jail but, is free uh, healthcare, so you might as well. <laughs> but I, I would certainly, you know, again, it's about fostering that relationship and uh, and you know making sure that when he does get to the point where he's out on his own, that uh, you know without the constant influence of his uh, familial uh, surroundings um, on him that he may realize that uh, he can't pay rent uh, while, uh, you know, saying he, he refuses to work on Sunday for religious, uh, you know, for religious grounds. Right. Yeah, absolutely. He may just come to realize, oh, this is the real world after all. So the, this is your, your daughter's son. This is my daughter's son. Yeah. So does your, does your daughter have any, um, restrictions about you talking about pastafarian with well, him or and i don't necessarily i just did an se thing so i didn't really talk uh pastafarianism it's you know um he he gets i mean he sees me in the community um you know fridays i walk around with the tricorn uh, in the community and uh you know i say ahoy to everyone that i meet and um that's just you know an, an image i've been building up over time in, in the community but underlying all that is you know rational free thinking right um you know just drawing attention to the uh, fact that uh, um the differences in our beliefs um you know what what we believe is a, is important and it has an impact and that what i have to say about my beliefs you know while some people think it's crazy when you really look at it, it's about as crazy as everybody else's beliefs, you know, when it comes to religion. So, cool. mm -hmm. so she, so to answer your question, she doesn't, she doesn't limit my, inf my um, interactions with him um, because for instance, I did ask her directly if I could uh, have this interview with him and show it on YouTube. Um, so she was okay with that. But cool. partly, I think, because we didn't talk directly about his God belief. <laughs> Mute your mic if you're not talking, guys. <laughs> Someone's playing this like audio in the background. This <laughs> or, at least turn, or at least turn off the music in the background. All right. So yeah. um, I just want to say thank you for sharing that story, Gary. Um, and I, I can't tell you how hard it is for coming out of religion to return back to having normal conversations, relationship with family members who are still in religion. I have a sister that's Muslim. I have a mom that's Jehovah Witness. I got other family members that are Christian. And when we have Thanksgiving together, it's a very awkward situation because they all look at me like I'm the one that doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> but I'm not praying. So, you know, I, I, I'm really thankful that I've learned about how to have these kinds of conversations. And I'm also really happy that it's not hard to just reach out and talk to someone and I'm, I'm I would love to plug that video that you did with your grandson uh, at, towards the end of this conversation so we'll get that link ready and in the meanwhile Gary all right Larry we're at the bottom of the half hour how about you have us out well sure uh, this is digital free thought radio hour on WZO radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville Tennessee we'll be right back after this short message Ooh, it's the short message, the short message of the day. Go outside. You want to play, have a volleyball day, learn a spike all day. That's my way. Oh, what do they say? There's your songs. We're atheists. We do this all day long. And we're back to the show, 103.9 FM. Wozo Radio. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Very good. Very well done. Thanks. Today is Sunday, <laughs> March, May 3rd, 2020 second half of the show let's talk about the free thought groups that you can join here in knoxville we'll just mention them shortly it's the atheist society of knoxville we're in our 18th year with over a thousand members come join us you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org uh, by the way if you don't know uh, if there's a meetup in your area go to meetup.com and look for it if you don't find one start Stop one, one. <laughs> Uh, another large free thinking group here in Knoxville is the Rationalist of East Tennessee. That's R-E-T, and you can find them online at rationalist.org. Uh, earlier in the show, we said we talked about the Knoxville's Atheist Call-In TV show. 
is called the Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And the reason they say that, uh, you were talking last week about uh, AFK being the perfect name. because It's it, a great name. You should ask questions. You should ask uh, questions. The reason they call the Freethinkers United Coalition is because this TV show is, is done by all the different groups. Uh, ASK, RET, uh, other people who are involved in the other groups are here in Knoxville, the, uh, the Sunday Assembly, um, just generally, uh, they all try to have some kind of input. So they decided to call the YouTube page, a YouTube channel, the Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. And that's why. And you can find it there on YouTube. Now, if you're interested in getting involved in the TV show or the radio show, just Come to our uh, Digital Free Thought Radio, our uh, webpage on Facebook. Yeah. Or you can go to um, Let's Chat and That's talk me. to uh, Wombat about it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Why not? And we are now back our, our topic. We were talking about why can't we just leave religion alone? Why, do we, why don't we just let people believe what they want to? Yeah. And of course, we mentioned that the answer is that religion does great harm in the world. And maybe we should talk about talk some more about the harm itself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I wanted I know you're the harm guy. So why don't mm -hmm. you tell me about this? Like if I thought I had a soul and that I didn't need to apologize to you if I hurt you, and I can just apologize to, you know, the big yeah. guy in the sky. Yeah. What's well, the you're problem? Talking there? About, you're talking about forgiveness. Um, if, if an atheist hurt somebody harm somebody they have to go to that person and ask their forgiveness mm -hmm. and 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 make retribution sometimes in order to get that, that forgiveness or a believer can just go in their bathroom or their home or whatever a bedroom kneel down and ask god for forgiveness that's fine for the for the person who does the problem the, creates the problem or causes the trespass but it doesn't do anything for the person who was harmed mm -hmm. all uh -oh. Also, buddy, I mean, this was an article that one of our uh, digital free thought blog uh, members brought up. Uh, says it it lets the um, if you forget, like Christianity always says, you know, you need to forgive the people who trespass against you. Well, that's fine unless they're a serial trespasser, like a, like a serial rapist or a, a misogynist or somebody who does this all the time, and you forgive them, it just lets them off scot free. Yeah. Uh, they don't have to answer to uh, the authorities about things like that when you just let it go. They're, and, they're free to continue doing what they're doing. And I think in the Bible, that only references people who are within your same belief system. So like if you're a Sumerian who, you know, wronged a Hebrew, oh, we can kill that Sumerian. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. acceptable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can I Greg, jump what, in and oh, say something? Yeah, go sure. for it. Go for it. Go for it. Would, um, hey, hi, Bruce. by the way, for those who haven't uh, met me, I'm Bruce, I'm a random kid from New Zealand. Um, hey, Bruce. Hello, Bruce. Welcome. Hey. Um, would you say that those harms are more to do with the fact that that belief system or religion isn't universal as opposed to the belief system itself? So like if everyone... Is that for thought, me or Larry? Or, or anyone, anyone really. Just like if... Well, I think like take, it, I take any of those examples that you used, if they applied equally to the people who had trespassed against you, for example, those issues you raised wouldn't necessarily be an issue, right? So it's only an issue because they're talking to or trespassing against someone who's not sharing that perspective. Well, well I think it's just like something I'm throwing out there, not necessarily. Felt I, like I mindset is dangerous. Whereas Sorry, second. us and them kind of thing. And that just gets into a lot of stuff. Well, I think if it applies to your religion, then it applies. If it doesn't, then don't worry about it. You know, if you're, if you're like an Eastern philosophical religion where you don't have that belief, and we're talking about that belief in forgiveness, um, you know, per se, then I would, I would kind of ignore it. But if, it, if you belong to a religion who, who has that uh, precept, then maybe you should take it to heart. My thought would be if it was universal, it would be less of a problem, but it's still a fundamental problem. Sort of like putting a Band-Aid on a bleeding wound. Like there might still need to be more fundamental work being put on there. And yeah, if it's universal, that's like putting the Band-Aid on. But the real problem is we all have this mindset that isn't necessarily based on like value and critical thinking that's getting us possibly motivated to move around in circles and not actually progress forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I, I find, um, 
you know, this, this question about why we care. Um, you know, it's not just about religion, right? So if you, if you've got uh, magical, I mean, if you're thinking magically, um, things like homeopathy work for you. Yeah. Um, you know oh what I mean? Gosh. And, and that then ties into, you know, a whole bunch of people believe in homeopathy. They talk to their, uh, you know, our elected officials and, and then that becomes included in the healthcare system. And all of a sudden, and that, and that kind of thing. your, 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 your healthcare resources are now being allocated to systems or alternate medicines that clearly mm -hmm. do not work except in magical thinking. And that has a real, real impact. Yes. I mean, it's the same thing as if someone said on a, on a political scale, like, yeah, I think you should wear masks. And then next thing you know, 600,000 people are buying up all the N95 masks that a hospital needs to do its work properly right. so that these people can wear them in non-sterile environments, put them on with non-sterile hands and pick up groceries and throw them away after wearing them for way too long with their design use. And so there's there's it's even in science even outside of religion even outside of homeopathy there's just a value towards how do my actions influence other people and what are the consequences of them in a societal environment and mm -hmm. everything has consequences and we have to think about okay if that's the case what's the best course of action what can i determine is good things and bad things to do moving forward and if i don't have that critical mindset to parse good actions from bad actions we as a society could practically fall apart and that's mm -hmm. why I'm thinking like we're being held together by a glue of critical thought and we need to make sure we, we hold that. And, I, and, and I share how that yeah, works. Right? That's, that's beautifully put. Yeah. We're being held together by a glue of critical thought and we need to work to make sure that that's good. Yeah. Bruce, what do you got? Um, I was thinking if, if you would, like if you were to apply that to religion, mm. then you'd want to apply that to non-religious actions and yes. thoughts as well right Absolutely. which essentially insinuates that there's one ideal way to live because every oh. other everything else that's be below that is going to have some kind of impact that's low like you know it's like it sounds like a very utilitarian um, approach to life walk that down even more fundamentally instead of saying there's one good way to live say there's a good way to determine how to live right and then so what, is, what is real versus what is not real? Yeah, there and is. based on your situation, your final answer might be different from someone else's, but there's a good mindset to have to determine what good actions are between bad actions. Yeah. And, the, and the outcome might be different for other people, but it's all about the epistemology. And what yeah. determines when the outcome is different? We can talk about this more offline. This sounds like it'll be a lot longer conversation than just 15 minutes. Bru That's good. Bru Joe, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about this so far? Boudreaux, what do you think about oh, this? Oh, uh, I, I heard, uh, I heard Brew. Uh, I thought yeah. it was Bruce. Brew. No, you're good. Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm liking this. That it sounds like we're kind of getting into that area of morality where you're, we're trying to use and uh, philosophy or philosophy, ethics sure. in general. Yeah, we're trying to use science to inform ethics, morality, mm -hmm. which I think is the best thing to do, and I think that's the way we can come up with something objective across the board doesn't matter skin color religion anything there is there's a way An to determine way of yeah. Yeah. Um, best way to live uh, yeah i well, have a question oh dealing with thought, religion yeah. i mean dealing with reality mm -hmm. i got a quick question to throw out uh and and i'll throw this out to gary in fact because he beat me twice so gary go for it and then i got a question out go for it gary i was just going to say that you know, critical thing, of course, is about, a, you know, a, re a, li a reliable methodology for investigating the world that yields reliable results. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and that's kind of what I think about when I'm, you know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, uh, Shermer's uh, baloney uh, test kit. Detection kit. A baloney detection kit, yeah. Um, and, you know, I just see that I'm, I've been actually putting together this idea that I should go to the local college uh, and see if I can put on a small course on, on baloney detection and just use their, their course manual because I think the value of uh, those uh, critical thinking skills is immeasurable. Yeah, yes. absolutely. And it's not something that's regularly taught. You have no, to, it's and not. It's not so, and it's something like you can forget it. Like if you don't do it long enough, it can go away. It's not like riding right. a bike. You have to mm -hmm. keep in school, it's, it, it. in school, it seems like we are taught to 
retain information and repeat information. Right. Yep. Pretty much what to think, not how to think. And there's always a right answer and you have to know it. And it's better to guess than to say you don't know, which in a lot of times is actually the best answer. Um, hey, I got a question. This is going back on Boudreaux's point. He said that, what if there was one kind of religion, would that be better? I'm, I, hear me out, go on a limb with me. What if there was just one kind of atheism? Because we all know textbook definition, atheism is just not believing in God. There's a lot of different people who don't believe in God. That's fire. But when you talk to people, there's clearly beyond just the idea that they aren't convinced that God's true. They have different compulsions and flags and, and, and things that they the support, don't support. And it appears from the theistic point of view that there's just so many different kinds of atheists and they aren't really necessarily agreeing with each other and that there's no general unison or consensus. And that's why they're so angry with each other. And how, wouldn't it be better if there was just one straightforward platform for atheism? Yes. Larry, what do you think about that? Um, one straightforward platform for atheism? Yeah, just what uh, there, like, is there want, not? Like, <laughs> just, we ju I, I preface this question with that. But like, if you talk to someone who also doesn't believe in a God, but also says they're... Um, the also well, think I mean, there isn't a God. Atheism is one answer to one question. Right. Uh, I mean, if Larry, you you're a bad person to go to first for this. Boudreaux, what <laughs> do you think right. about this? Yeah, Boudreaux, yeah, what do you let, think about let, this? I, I, He's crossing I, I his arms this. while he answers this. He's like, I, love this. I love this, Ty. Because Boudreaux, this is, what do you got? This is something I think we brought up before. Mm. The, one of the past uh, presidents of uh, an atheist group uh, got up and, and talked to a group of atheists and, and, and yelled at them and said, look, we have a problem. We don't all identify as the same thing. Exactly. We have nuns, we have atheists, and that's N-O-N-E. We've right. got the Free Thinker Coalition. We've got the Rational East of Tennessee. Yes. We've got the ass. It was like, come on, guys. We, we should all band under one name, epithet, whatever you want to call it, because then we can check a box on a I demographic like form. is a good label. What is? Secular humanism, I think. Yeah. Well, it's a great label, but again, mm -hmm. we're not all picking it. Exactly. And then there are speech yeah. spiritualists, there are, are agnostics and atheists. Pastafarians. Pastafarians. <laughs> so when we fill out a, a form and, and, and we're trying to get some kind of political power behind our voice, we're all checking different boxes or choosing not to check a box or... None. Yeah. I, yeah. I love, I love this thought, Ty. I, I think you're right. We, we need to kind of all unify. I agree. Yeah, we yeah. So much po more powerful. You showed me the Dawkins scale, haven't you? Like multiple, yeah. on multiple occasions. I would say like, once you're past a certain number, you're this, you're, yeah. but you can always be different numbers of this, yeah. but you what are this. It's to oh, Eric, perfect question for you. Yeah. So it's a, it's a seven point scale. Richard Dawkins put together uh, basically to kind of define your, your, your belief in. Or disbelief. Uh, and belief in, yeah, you're six, right? I'm sorry. He said he was yeah, he said he was a six. He he actually was was the, the first one to convince me that I wasn't a seven. A seven is you absolutely believe there's no God, you know it 100 percent true, right? And a one is you absolutely believe there's a God, 100 percent is true, and then you've got ranges in between. But but yeah, you're right. He he claims he's a six because he doesn't know exactly there's no God. He just doesn't believe in one. So he's an agnostic atheist. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I think most rational atheists mm -hmm. are. I am, uh, but yeah. Yeah. You still so, like Foo Fighters, so yeah, kind of rational. Yeah, the, I, I, I never really thought of that. Being united under one banner and considering ourselves one people group. Dread Pirate, what do you think about this? I'll get you from Wayne. And I, Wayne. you know, and thanks for asking. I actually put myself at a seven. Um, I think uh, I, for a long time, tried to sell myself as a six, um, but that's essentially a Pascal's wager proposition. Um, you know, I've just everything, well, I just, you know, yeah, I'm a seven. Everything <laughs> points it, to there not it, being. I'm a strident atheist. Yeah. <laughs> are you saying, are you saying you know every single possible proposed God? Or are you saying You're that talking one about specific knowledge God, versus belief. Yeah, that's, well, a seven combines the two, unfortunately. Yeah, that's no, not, yeah. not too much of a thing. I actually of might be a seven. Yeah. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm a. Here's why. I think, uh, I, I think I'm a seven because it's more of i forget the guy who, who said it he said he's he's a militant agnostic he's he's an i don't know and you don't either mm -hmm. so if i'm pretty sure that no one else can really know what was before the big bang or 
no one else can really know if there's other dimensions that are supernaturally or have yeah. some sort of or that there might be a god somewhere else in the universe we don't know yeah. that. or another and universe. if we don't know then we don't absolutely know that it doesn't exist that's why we we're can not come up with in our head that's not based on science can't possibly be a, a reflection of reality yeah here's the great thing about i don't know is i don't have to figure that out because i can just be not convinced that it's true and i think that's good enough a place for me to be at but if you very well define the God that we are talking about, like incredibly well defined, I can see myself as a seven if it's absolutely not possible for something like that to exist or if yeah. it's in itself contradictory. So certain gods, yeah, I can be even like a 7.7 7 or 7.0, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But when it's just, does God exist? I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know is the better answer. And six until you convince nine, nine, me, nine, nine. It's fine. Yeah, until you convince me, then I have no reason to believe that. And I don't know if that's true. I can see six is like, again. Yeah, it sounds like seven is like nothing that will happen will make you believe in God. Like mm. if God appeared right now and yeah. like made your great grandfather come back to life and something like that. And yeah, or, or whatever example you could think of. And that yeah. would still make you well, not believe seven, in God. That seven, like oh, seven is more of, I really think that's highly unlikely to happen. No, no, that's, no, that's no, no, not that's how the Dawkins scale works. No, no it's yeah. uh, highly, six is the highly unlikely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Seven so the seven, is the seven minded is, Yeah, seven is absolute. A one is an absolute. Both yeah. of those are scary places to be. Very no scary. Offense, no, no offense to, to someone to pick a seven. I was a seven, but I had to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a 6.9999 almost repeating right yeah. depending and on what we're talking about yeah yeah that's that's you're such the, a great point so you're the asymptote of uh, yeah, uh atheism go. sure sure well, yeah. well <laughs> that's <Again>. rude gary <laughs> watch it we have a we have a speech filter here and i don't want to edit everything all over once again. you get past the three you're an atheist on the scale so <laughs> athe atheism isn't in question here it's gnosticism that's in question there you go uh, that's why i like it and we right. can all be atheists even with that even with Joey, all this kind I'm, of I'm with you. I think it's a belief scale, and we're not talking about knowledge. And I've got the scale up here, and it says strong theist or strong atheist. They're not talking about Gnostics. They're talking yeah. about atheists. Well, there, there is another dimension to it, too. There's, there's supposed to be a box where you, it you can go. It depends on how you word atheism. It's just like, I know there is no God, or mm -hmm. I have that's, no reason to. That's Gnosticism. No yeah. to yeah. So that's just Gnosticism. to summarize. So just if I may address uh, you know, Bruce's uh, we, We're running out there. of time. Won't, oh. We're running out of time, so we're just going to summarize. Uh, mm. Clearly, even in this boardroom of you know, well-like-minded friends that like meet and talk on a regular basis, there's still conflict with regard to labels and, and I guess diagrams and stuff like that. And so I think this speaks to the idea of it be worthwhile to just have like a unified front. I think there could be some advantages there. Unlike religion, where... I can find that stifling. I feel like for atheism to have our voices be heard, at least on a political scale, it could be really valuable. Mm -hmm. um, guys, we are down to the couple, last couple of minutes of the show. Gary, can you please tell me about that video that you're talking about with your grandson and how we can find it? Well, sure. Yeah. Uh, so my YouTube channel is Mind Pirate, and pirate is spelled P Y R A T E. Cool. And I have a number of videos up there. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is but it, he looks like a young fella um so <laughs> what's it called what's the name of the video what's the name of the video um what's the name of your grandson <laughs> well it, it, you know i don't include his name because uh, um okay. his okay. mom you know suggested that i don't he's just 17 <sighs> wow. um he is some it's it's a name you wouldn't associate with a person so uh, it's a clearly made up name so uh I just, I'm sorry, I don't have it right in front of me. Fair enough. Um, but it's on Mind Pirate. Cool. Yeah. Um, Joey. I think it says Santa Claus or something is in the title too. So. Cool. Joey, where can people find your stuff? And uh, you just started your channel. Mind plugging that again? Yeah. I, um, I, don't, I don't have any videos or any content on either one of my channels right now. For my music and my comedy, it's going to be J just J.W. Kennedy. Just look up J.W. Kennedy on YouTube and uh, J.W.K hates the news on Twitter. And for my uh, street epistemology um, accounts, it's going to be speak your beautiful mind. So just nice. look up uh, speak your beautiful mind on YouTube and on Twitter. It's at you, you are at your beautiful mind spelled you are on Twitter. 
cool. Bruce, thank you for joining us. Uh, you're always welcome to come back for a longer extended discussions. Is there anywhere that you post stuff or any videos and stuff like that that you like? Anything you want to promote? Uh, no, no, I do, I do not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice and short and sweet. Boudreaux, what do you got for us? I'm, I keep threatening that Chad and I are going to release our, our video. We recorded it last week. I'm going to do some edits and some cool stuff. I will post that out and share it here. But in oh, the meantime, man. go watch uh, my COVID-19 cover of Overkill. Yes. Uh, at work. It's hilarious. Right. It's very, watch. very good. Also, props to Vivian for the yes. awesome flute solo. She was, the, yeah. she was the star. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Uh, so I'm Let's Chat. You can find me on YouTube under Let's Chat. I've also got a Twitter at 5 Minute Chat. That's number 5, M-I-N. C H A T. Uh, because of the quarantine thing, we've I've had a lot more time to be making videos. So there's a whole new suite of videos from CPAC 2020 that you can find. Talk to a guy who thought taxes were in Christian. Talk to a guy who thought he had a right to believe in God, and that's why he believes in God. And then also talk to a guy who was from Alaska, came down to CPAC and was basically terrified of Republicans and just wanted to see, okay, these guys are determining Good how reason. my yeah, <laughs> how my state's being ran. I just want to see if I can talk and have a reasonable conversation with any of them. And is there a good way for me to have that kind of conversation? Man, it was a great talk. I'm so glad he ran into me. Um, find those on my channel. They're coming out every Thursday. Larry, all, of, all for you. Okay, just before I get into that, uh, Boudreau, I did look at it a little closer. I see the knowledge portion of it under each one, so you're right. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> good job, good job. Yay. Okay, everybody, be sure to visit digitalfreethought.com. <laughs> Click on the blog button. You can also find our radio show archives there, uh, Atheist Songs, many articles on the subject, including the one that we were talking about today, or uh, the subject anyway. It's called What's So Wrong With Religion? Check it out. It's good very itemized long list. Uh, if you have any questions for the show, you can send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll try to answer them on future shows. You can also leave comments on the blog or the uh, Facebook page for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour or the YouTube channel uh, that uh, Tyrone has. Uh, it's, yeah. uh, let's chat. That's Go there me. and you can find our show with the video. And you'll also find our show on podcasts like iTunes, Stitcher, Luminary, Podcast.com, etc. And as a reminder, like I remind everybody every week, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Take care. Say bye all. Bye, bye guys. All.